The, the core concept of the Big Sister that we really wanted to, to have was sort of someone at the top of the Atom food chain. Someone who, when a splicer had gone off the rails and managed to harvest a little sister, sort of came for revenge after you um, and was able to reclaim that Atom and get it sort of back into the mix and back into the ecology. Uh, and that was something that required multiple big sisters. And so they are sort of watching over the whole city and, and waiting for this to happen. And when they are, they're dispatched by uh, the villain, Dr. Sophia Lamb, and they will, will hunt down those people anywhere. Obviously, the player is the main person this happens to over the course of the game. The Brute Splicer is one of the new splicers that we have down there in Rapture. Um, sort of uh, came about gameplay-wise from the fact that we really wanted, you know, you're playing a big daddy in Bioshock, and the expectation is you are incredibly tough as nails, and you can just chew through the normal sort of thuggish splicer with a stick with no problem. And so gameplay wise, we need to have something to ramp up that antagonism and the, the threat level. Um, and fictionally, we sort of came up with the idea of uh, Splicers living over this decade down in Rapture and how they would survive and how they would, you know, sort of feed off the atom and their friends and continue to splice up, growing more and more strong and more and more crazed. Um, and the Brute Splicer is one of those guys and he's sort of this big, giant, hulking form and he's able to, you know, pick up giant barrels and pieces of concrete, throw them at you, dash at you and knock you on your ass. And he's sort of somebody who, although he's just just a splicer can kind of go toe to toe with a big daddy uh, and is a credible threat for you. So, you know, when you see one of those guys, you kind of have to concentrate all your attention on him um, while there's a bunch of just, you know, the thuggish splicers running around getting mowed down relatively easily. In terms of weapons for Bioshock 2, uh, there, there were a couple of things that we really wanted to do. The first one um, was add uh, a lot more defensive playstyle because we do have a lot of the, uh, the the gather sieges that we have. When you place a little sister down in the world, it'll draw splicers out and you kind of have to defend her and yourself against those splicers. So a lot a lot of our new tools are focused on that kind of defense. So we have the trap rivets that are just very quick, disposable fire traps that will shoot back anywhere they're embedded in the world. Um, we also have mini turrets. You can deploy your own turrets wherever you want and they'll attack any splicer that comes within range. Um, we've expanded uh, the trap plasmid, like many of our plasmids, or all of our plasmids. It evolves over the course of the game and new abilities get added. So the trap can actually be charged with anything you want from the rest of your plasmid set. So if you charge it up with Winter Blast, when someone hits it, they'll get frozen thrown into the air and probably shatter on the way back down um, or and you can do that with any of the other plasmids as well um, and then in terms of the alternate ammo we wanted to supply uh, different sort of tactical purposes um, and not just have alternate ammos that you know this one is stronger against this guy and weaker against that guy we wanted you to sort of think about ammo for different situations and different kind of tactics so some of those are defensive like uh, like the trap rivets and some of those are interesting twists on kind of offensive weapons so we have our spear gun which is uh, our sniper weapon and you can kind of zoom in on guys, hit them in the head and they'll fly back and get pinned to the wall and then you can recover the spears out of that. Um, but it also shoots rocket spears, which rocket spears are high explosive spears that have a kind of, you know, uh, Roman candle, huge rocket coming off the back and when you hit a guy with it, if it doesn't kill him outright, he will go into a panic and start running around, probably run near his friends and then explode. If it does hit him, uh, it continues to supply that kind of physics impulse and he'll balloon around the world uh, like a deflated balloon before exploding and so a lot more kind of mayhem and tactical variation out of the weapons as well. For hacking for Bioshock 2, what we really wanted to do was find a way to kind of ingrain it directly into the action gameplay um, so that it wouldn't be something that you sort of went off to a separate screen, played, and came back to the game, that it was something that you could incorporate into your normal play style, whether you're a defensive player or you have like that boss round or whatever, hacking would be something that you could do simultaneously with everything else. Um, so hacking is now uh, sort of localized within the hack tool, which is one of our weapons. Um, it has alternate ammos and all the rest is a regular weapon that you can fire limited darts at hack targets, things like machines and bots and cameras around Rapture, um, and just play a quick, simple hacking mini game that ramps in complexity over the course of the game uh, and do it on the fly. It also allows you to hack on a distance, which lets you be a little bit more tactical on how you approach hacking situations. You know, you no longer have to run directly up to a camera to be able to hack it. You can kind of, if you're a careful player, spot it and use it to your advantage before you've even triggered it yourself. Bioshock 2 will ship worldwide on February 9th, 2010.